Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today I want to explain as simple and fast as possible how you can create a modal synthesizer, polyphonic synthesizer inside of Bitwig Studio just with the polygrid. And I open up here the polygrid and the init patch just gives us an yeah, a synthesizer here with a wavetable, oscillator and an envelope. And we can play it on the keyboard because here the uh, pitch pre chord is active. Table this because we don't need a wavetable oscillator at all. Um, so we use an oscilloscope here, which is the slow. And instead of using the auto audio output of this envelope here, where you go audio in, then the volume is shaped, and then you get the audio out here, right? Uh, we get the signal output where it outputs basically the shape that you dial in here with the knobs as a signal. So when I press some keys on the keyboard, you can see we get the signal as a shape, as a signal out of uh, this envelope here. And we use this signal as an audio signal. So just a, a crackle, uh, basically, because we, um, yeah, send the speakers basically to hell by using this uh, steep ramp here. <laughs> um, so then we use an XP filter. We send this audio signal into the XP filter and out the audio output here. We switch to band pass to pole and then we double click this frequency knob here and it snaps to C3. And because here uh, the um, pitch pre chord is active, and the gate input pre chord is active, we can play now on the keyboard. Maybe use here a peak limiter. Okay. So this is now the base of our, of our modal synthesizer because we have a noise burst, sending it into a filter, excite this filter, and with the resonance we have self resonance, and then we get sound out of it. Nice. So now we need to create some partials because this is only the root frequency or the fundamental. So we go for, let's start with the um, pitch in. Get this here into that. And we disable the pre chord and we um, dial in here the amount of cut off modulation. Uh, so now it's basically the same as before, but now we have a separate module here for the pitch in when we and hook up something in in between here. It's still playing, it's, it still works, right? And in between we hook up here a transpose. And then we can start to uh, just yeah, second harmonic. We can dial this in here with the numbers two, one. So this is basically the ratio. Um, you can also use here ratio module if you want to and just dial in to one basically the same but afterwards i want to modulate probably the transpose at some point with some modulators so i'm sticking here with the transpose option again ratio of two to one it's exactly one octave higher nice three one And we do eight partials. Five, six, seven, and eight. So now we need to um, bring all these audio outputs together and we use a sum module. Basically a mixer, but without mixing controls. All these outputs in there. Easy. Then we get the output here. Go to the Nice. So now we need uh, some controls to shape actually all devices at once. For instance, for the resonate 
um, value. We go here for a macro, I would say. All this resonance. Then we modulate with this. So now we dial in here modulation. All resonate, resonance uh, knobs. Then we can value of zero. Then we can just use this knob to dial in resonance for all, all filters at once. Maybe you can just um, some notes here. Okay, this kind of works and sounds already nice, like an instrument. Uh, but now I want to switch this to uh, polyphonic mode because we want to press multiple notes, right, at the same time. At the moment, it's just monophonic. And now with the polyphonic mode, we have a different problem. Now the voice is cut off because in polyphonic mode, um, each voice uh, needs, to, needs to have a feature to keep it alive, right? So Bitwig doesn't know when a voice is dying or needs to needs to be killed so now we have like this pretty cut cut off sound because all the resonating tails here are cut off because the ad is the only envelope in here that keeps the voice alive so we need the second one go for the ad here and when you open up here to help menu we can see we have in the inspector here this effect voice lifetime thing so it's basically audio is flowing through this adsr coming from this xp from these resonating xp filters here having a long tail outputting audio and as long there's audio recognized inside this envelope uh, this adsr keeps the current voice of your pressed key alive so you can press multiple keys Right, and each voice is kept alive until there is no audio coming into this ADSR anymore. You can also use this here a bit to shape sound a bit more. So remove the harsh attack, basically. But nice, sounds sounds cool. So maybe we can also bring in here another filter. Um, let's use the new one MG here, the MOOC filter. We can use this maybe to shape harmonics a bit more. It's more, it's it's kind of, it's kind of changing the volume of each partial, right? That is like subtractive synthesis. So each partial is playing at the same loudness, and then you remove basically here top frequencies. So when I use here the spectrum spectrum filter, or let's use two after the filter and before the filter. Right, you have all the top harmonics and then you slowly subtract every harmonic. So this is how a subtractive synthesis basically works. And for subtractive synthesis, you need at least the sound that has overtones harmonics. So that's why in most subtractive synthesizers, there is no sign wave or sine oscillator because sine has no overtones so there's only saw and tree and square or pulse wave right this is the reason for that um so now we have here a bit of um shaping the sound we can uh, we could actually replicate this bandpass by just adding here an attenuator to partial Would be this, the, the added additive synthesis method of having a low cut or a low pass. Um, so instead of removing here the harmonics with this one, you can dial down each partial until we end up only with the uh, root or with the fundamental frequency so it's basically the same thing just an yeah different method um so yeah removing the upper harmonics this is way easier right 
can make this differently and start. So you can also shape here the inputs first a bit. You can see here it, it changes the tonality a bit. We can also, instead of using this uh, signal output here, we can use a noise module. And sending this noise burst into these filters has a different feel, different vibe to it. It's more like a noisy attack. Maybe switches to stereo. Ooh, pink noise. Gets more like a physical modeling vibe. But still cool. Maybe switch back here to the signal one. But just by shaping the, the input burst the noise that you send in, um, you can change the tonality of this, uh, out, of this output very drastically. You can also try to um, use a low pass here on this one. It has, a, has some kind of effect to it, right? Just to keep, that, keep this in mind, you can use all these parameters to shape the sound later on or make it more fluid or more alive by randomly modulating all of this stuff. Um, so what else can we do? We can change the volume of each partial, which has a drastic effect. We can change the frequency of each partial. Maybe we can do something like um, using a macro here and calling this distribution and then we dial back here each of these yeah which modulations maybe a what's wrong modulate everything just a tad go in here to the spectrum and dial it in by our numbers minus one one So yeah, inside Bitwig, it's it's a bit of a hassle. You have to press every time you dial in a value, you have to press return. You just click to the next option here. So if I dial in minus two and press the next option here, right, you can see it's reset to the original value. I wished we had something like a tap, so you could just press tap, so it's a save and move on to the next. But it's not, not in there. It would be nice to have tap, tapped... Uh, like, like it works in Windows by default, right? So now that we have this, we can dial in here basically um, with the distribution to remove all the frequency um, modulation or transposing here. So it sounds like this. We can move from trash can to I don't know, steel drum or something like this, so you can see that uh, how the frequencies are distributed between these partials is very important for the sound. So um, you can come up with different um, algorithms, maybe how to how to shape the frequencies. So maybe call this your algorithm one, maybe. And then you say, well, this algorithm is changing some of the frequencies pretty, pretty drastically. Um, maybe, maybe I zoom out here a bit more. Too small, probably, right? Um, algorithm one changes maybe the second partial like this and like this and this direction and this and that. Like come up with different frequency modulations for each partial. So let's see how this sounds. We get this type of sound. Then you create maybe a macro and call this algorithm 2. And you don't need to do this randomly like I did here. You can completely go and dive into some um, uh, some liter literature and, and read how certain frequencies are distributed for, this trans for, for different sounds and come up with a um, more unique kind of distribution algorithm. Just to give you some ideas for experimentation here. 
this gives more kind of bell sounds. And I leave the, the fundamental completely untouched just to have something, have a bass in there. Then you can mix up the two algorithms. But yeah, you can do hundreds of these algorithm macros here, right, to come up with something interesting at the end. Hey, it's a bell generator. Uh, reverb. Delay to here. Yeah, maybe use a macro for the cutoff here because there's a lot of high end content there. You can also use Velo Mult, which changes the volume, the output volume here of the grid based on your velocity, how hard you press the key on the keyboard. Dial this up. We can play very soft or very loud. You can also use the velocity to change here the attack time, so we use a modulator. But the harder I press my key on the keyboard is something I do a lot here. Um, styling in a soft attack. This is basically when I play the sound pretty soft on my keyboard. Then when I press the key harder, I make the attack sound pretty hard or pretty fast. Right, so you can make, make the sound or the synthesizer more expressive. What you also can do is use your maybe expressions and use the velocity to change the algorithms just a, a tad, just slightly, right? So every time you press the key a bit differently, then the sound changes a bit differently. Or the harder you press the key on the keyboard, the more you open up the cutoff. But this is basically all you can do to make it feel more real or yeah, more alive. So now that we have this, what else can we do? So we have here um, this and that. Okay, um, another option would be to maybe use the same principle we used here with the bandpass filter. We can apply this to all of the output of this one here. So we can insert here another XP like this, which is to bandpass, which is to the frequency or C3, E3, and then self-resonate with this. So it sounds more a bit more muffled. You have a lot of also a lot of texture on top, but it's still everything have to go through the self-resonating uh, bandpass filter here, which makes it more musical, I would say. So also, what I also like to do is to play back to live. And then after all these reverbs and delays here, I put a slow machine by bless this. Slow everything down. And then mix in the original signal. Uh, 40%, something like this. Then you can play and OK, 
Okay, something like this. And maybe this also needs a bit of pitch modulation at the end. I'm not sure if we just put this in here. So I use a delay. We just table this here. You can see when we move this delay, it changes the pitch slightly. We use this to random mod, and I always love to use random uh, modulators for the delay modification. I know a lot of synthesizers actually use an LFO for that, but then you have always the same you know, up and down movement in the pitch. But here it's like a bit more random. So I modulate here. Okay. Too slow. That's too much. What we also can do is use a um, delay or long delay, get the output of this and feed it back into our um, self-resonating XP here and modulate the filter frequency. Let's see how this sounds. I like it. Um, maybe we should here put in a select so we can switch between the two versions. So we have here button here and call this, I don't know, um, donating. And we have to switch the inputs here. This. We have like the original version from before and then the second version is here our XP filter, self-resonating. Of course we can use this here also in the modulator section. All this rest so not. But then we have to use here also a macro modified amount. Frequency mode. Okay. Yeah, I can come up with a lot of different ideas to tweak this. Um, but I think I explained here the basics very well. Um, the rest, most of the times, or that's actually true for everything in synthesis. The synthesis method uh, itself is sometimes pretty easy and simple to do also in the grid. The hard part is basically to find the right values for each module and the sweet spots and how you map these remote controls to something and come up with something interesting for the end user. So it's like when you buy a synthesizer, you imagine or your expectation is that you fiddle around maybe for 10 seconds and then you find a nice sound and then you think, wow, this is a nice synthesizer. Um, 
but it's not about you know the processing and the method you do it's more about the designer how they choose or chosen uh, what to map to what uh, parameter and how you um, influence it via the interface so this is the hard part basically of building instruments is at least what i learned in the recent years um that it's very hard to find sweet spots and make an instrument sound great or feel great for the end user that he just dials in a bit of here and there and then it sounds good but you can see the possibilities are endless you can tweak this in all kinds of di directions i'm pretty sure when i disable all of this here and put a maybe a distortion unit here at the end uh somewhere and dial in the resonator here and play some lower parts get some drastic bass sounds out of this probably free verb still they get percussion sounds out of this probably and um, bass drums and you know bass sounds and whatever so it's tweakable in every kind of direction so i would say i saved this here as a preset maybe without the vst so it's bitwig only uh, and this is um, let me see. I think this is beta 8 here. Beta 8, and I put this on my Patreon, so you can download this on my Patreon uh, for free. You just need to subscribe probably for just one buck, but then, you know, you can just download this and have fun with it. Or you just rebuild it from the ground up. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not hard to do. Just follow the instructions in this video and you're good. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Patreon. And um, thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.